Hello everybody, welcome to Bears Boldly Go, Lost Bears, Prodigy in Review. Yeah. Where we're reviewing, I know we said we've got to do two episodes, but we realised our numbers were off, uh, so we're doing a single episode this week. And I think this one works quite well as a single episode. Yes, actually. it like, is a it certainly cracking episode. To um, what looks like a two-part finale, probably. It is uh, in, in nice Star Trek... Uh, tradition mm. this episode is called time a monk mm. yep um this particular story um or at least plot device has been used uh multiple times in star trek this title um, has basically been used to... yeah yeah um but i don't see a problem with that at all obviously um for the target audience of this tv series um Again, this is probably their first Star Trek. Um, also, some absolutely horrific implications in this episode. Yeah, I, like some absolutely devastatingly horrific implications. Oh yeah, but and I think that's that, spoilers like... for the end of the episode, so we'll have a little bit of a. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a time a uh, it's a time episode where time goes amok, <laughs> mm. um, and they all get stuck in their own separate pockets of time moving at different speeds as the ship's about to blow up. Mm. Um, and we start the episode on a holodeck where Jamie's trying to teach him how to get along. By using the old uh, fox, chicken and grain um, get them across a river. Yeah. Um, and it's not thing. going well. <clears throat> mm. And Dal reveals that they aren't Starfleet cadets. Yeah. Um, and then uh, stuff goes wrong. Mm. They get, How uh, does it go wrong, James? They go into a time storm of some variety, you know, Star Trek it's, stuff. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a tachyon storm, Oh, James. a tachyon storm. Because, so, uh, yeah. of course, uh, ta- tachyon is, uh, tachyons are a form of uh, radiation that are um, uh, related to time travel. So time storm? Um, yeah, a time storm, I suppose. Is, I wasn't is... inaccurate with my statement. No, James, but the people <laughs> want the facts, James. <laughs> Okay, some Star Trek te- some Star Trek techno babble happened. Some Star Trek techno babble happened, um, and um, yes, they uh, because um, the tachyons affect gravity as well as time, um, and gravity is or an artificial form of gravity is what keeps the protostar uh, drive um, intact. Um, then um, the uh, the shift in gravity. Um, causing it, uh, the um, protostar drive to yes. explode, um, which we see happen multiple times throughout the episode, uh, and of course the ship being destroyed. Um, well, those alternate, and then <clears throat> they get caught in the alternating, depending who's nearest to the explosion, effectively. Mm. Um, so for Jankum was the absolute closest. Yeah, so for Jankum it happens in moments. Mm. Yeah. Uh, then you have Rock, who is stuck in what is effectively infinite time. Mm. Um, then we have Murph. Yeah, Murph, yeah. yeah. Then uh, Dal, who... So Janeway goes to Rock first after realising what needs to be done, but Rock mm. can't handle mm. handle it. So, unfortunately... She ends up going to Murph and then Dal. Dal starts and designs in his time because he's on a he's on a long one, but not long enough. <coughs> yes, he's on the he's on the the same side of the sine wave as, yeah. as Rock, um, but um, because he's further away from it, uh, he's got less time than Rock, uh, but more time than Murph. Yeah, so he. Um, uh... He manages to design the exact part they need to fix everything, but he mm. doesn't have the time to actually... But he's missing one yeah. uh, key component. Um, and that, all so... while this is happening, in theory, mm. big evil robot man is uh, building himself on the ship replicator. Yeah, um, the uh, the not General Grievous um, yes. is, is building a second uh, General Grievous um, in, 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 the, in the replicator, yeah. Or, or is it a fabricator? It's a I know shit. they call it a replicator. It's a, shit, it's a vehicle replicator. Yeah. 
So, um, and yeah, so uh, he does what he can do, but his time is up. Where it gives it moves us over to. Oh no, we've had a uh, zeros next. No. Zero was first, and then Dal. So Dal's on the shore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, Zero also didn't have terribly long, I think, because they, because obviously they're moving yeah. further and further away from it. So the implication that Zero qu- had done a lot by the time Janeway. <clears throat> but then Zero is a um, a different kind of life form anyway. So yeah. that, uh, potentially for Zero. Um, time is slightly less meaningful in a way, um, or at least the perception of time, anyway. Um, so yeah, so the, at this point, the like all the schematics have been yeah like, zero designs zero yeah. designs it. Um, Dal puts it together except for a missing part, um, and then um, it ends on the final person who's on the longest time frame, mm. and that is a uh, Gwyn. Mm. Um, unfortunately, because uh, she she's one that basically real time. Yeah, she's pretty much a, a and because she is speed. robot mm. gets to build himself. Up. Yeah, so she has to contend with that. And while in theory she nearly gets it all done, mm. she destroys him, and in the process, yeah, uh, um, lose, loses the the. The, the item that needs uh, needs to be built to save the ship. So she leaves a ship's log for a captain's log for the rock to find. Mm. Knowing that rock is moving at such a slow pace of time that eventually the captain's log will be found and rock will yeah um, will view it and the schematics will be there. And I guess et cetera, et cetera. I, I didn't give a spoiler warning at the start again, so apologies. Mm. But you know the deal by now. Watch the episode before watching our videos. Mm. Like, I don't know. This is yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I always try no, and give spoiler like warnings, and spoiler warnings are good, but I'm forgetful. Mm. And yeah, w- w- watch Star Trek before watching us talk about Star Trek. I mean, just watch Star Trek. Like, you oh, know, yeah. Like, Even if you don't want to listen to us talk about Star Trek, watch yeah, Star yeah. Trek. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, we'd love you to watch our stuff as well. Um, oh. But um... Jimmy, I, I've only just clocked this. Jimmy mm. Simpson is Dreadnought. Jimmy Simpson. Uh, Westworld. I'm but you, names, would, you would know him as one of the uh, one of the Poils in Always Sunny. Oh, really? Yeah. Muck Poyle. Yeah, the Matt Boyles. Mm, yeah. Those milk lovers. Those yeah, those milk lovers, yes. So, um Yeah, so so it falls to Rock. And of course at the beginning of the episode, or close to the beginning of the episode, um Rock is um she's having a bit of an identity crisis because yes. it's all, all sort of decided that she's going to be the security officer because she's the biggest, scariest looking one of the lot of them. Yeah, despite which, course, being she, she... a child. <clears throat> yeah, despite and, being... And more of a child than the rest of them because apart from maybe Jankum and Zero, which I guess only leaves two more, but these are kids. Yeah, I mean, the, there's two teenagers, definitely. Um, like, the probably fall in middle teens yeah um actually um what's the 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 daughter of the of of the villain called i uh, remember her name again gwyn gwyn 17 because we had that flashback so yes. we know that she's 17 um dal is going to be a similar ish age um uh zero for their species, I get the feeling is a similar age. Yeah. But actually, in real terms, in say our measurement of time, might be significantly older. And Jankum is in theory an adult. I think <laughs> Jankum might be in er- like early twenties, yeah. possibly. But obviously, someone who's had to fend for themselves for their entire life and therefore maybe hasn't emotionally aged. Um, no one knows about Murph. <clears throat> no. Um could be a million years old, could be a matter of days. Um and then um Rock I get the feeling that Rock is no older than ten. 
in I our, in our measurement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and therefore, obviously, for her, this is a really the scary imp- thing. The implication here is at least it could be significantly the the, older now. Yeah, by the end of the episode, because of how long that poor person has had to fend for themselves. So here's where we get to the point where she teaches herself how to build this thing. After te- learning uh, quantum physics and etc. Et yep, yeah, like, she teaches herself to completely <clears throat> reprogram a holographic AI from scratch because Dreadnought deletes Janeway. Mm. Dreadnought straight up deletes her using yeah. Chakotay's uh, voice imprint, which is mm. scary. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Rock learns how to create AI here. Well, no, she finds uh, the file because it, oh, yeah. it, it was still in a buffer somewhere, yeah. but she still needed to like re-enable it. Still, and, it's impressive. And still re- yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a mark of how many times she tried to do it before she succeeded, <clears throat> mm. and it's a large number. It's I think it was 278 yeah. failures, and it, this was 279th time, so the, the, the success. So, like... Assuming, obviously, it took her several years to get to the point where she even knew, yeah. in theory, how to do it, and then did it once a day. Like, and I mean, that's still an extra year, so... It's the moment at the at the end where I think Green clocks what's happened and asks mm. Jamie, like, how long was she in there? And Jamie's supposed to just too, too long. Like, mm. when she uh, hugs Janeway. Mm-hmm. Because uh, she just needs that. She's been alone for... <laughs> yeah. Like, it's such a... Like, she saved them all, but the cost is... The cost is, is huge. Um, however, at the same time, um, might be beneficial for her oh, and yeah, for everyone else It sounds well. like she's got to be a science <clears throat> officer. <clears throat> yeah. Because she's taught herself... Yeah, the science. science. <laughs> yeah, yeah, beyond what most of the others are aware of. So, like, uh, other than maybe zero, of course. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, makes perfect sense. Um. Or medical officer. There's no saying. Um. But yeah, although it's a... who's to say there isn't an EMH? <clears throat> Don't know. They just haven't been. They haven't been hurt enough yet to yeah. to need one. It's a. It's a. <clears throat> I mean, logically, there would be a. EMH on board the ship, why wouldn't there be? <laughs> like, well, yeah, true, true. Um, it's like, that... it making a post star, it's like, hey, Shikoti, we're going to send you out with a, just with your old captain as a hologram, just in case mm. you did, you felt a little bit off about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Captain C. Just, just, yeah, just like, you know, she's she's only going to look over your shoulder. It's fine. Like, yeah, but we won't she, give you an emergency she... medical hologram, no. You're not yeah, getting you one of them. Be... Yeah, yeah, because you, you're going to die of shame, not injury. Um, so, but, um, yeah, it's... I can't wait to find out what happened to Shikoti. Yes, yes, same. Um... Although I, I get the feeling we're not finding out until season two. Potentially, although I've seen a still image of the crew in Starfleet uniforms for the two-parter. Yes, so have I. So have I. Um, <clears throat> so, um, which is nice, obviously. Um, but then that could be just because Janeway's gone, well done, you are a team now. Yeah. Have, have some cadet uniforms. But, uh, um, yeah, great episode. I think the best episode of the season so far. Yes, agreed. Um, Although I, I, you know, as with most things, it it takes a good build to make an episode like this. Yeah. I think you know you need the seven episodes that oh yes come come before C- it certainly you, like um, but yeah, this this was a great episode and a really really good example of excellent children's TV as well because yes it was it was dark and scary but without being too dark and scary. There was some very important lessons to be learned. There was a nice little sprinkling of maths and yeah. science in there as well. Like, like saying this, like almost to camera, like this is a sine wave. <clears throat> yeah, which is something that, like, obviously you don't learn until no. you're in high school usually. But it's that tiny, simple bit of information that you can go, oh, that's a sine wave. 
yeah. I know what that looks like now. Um, and... and like maybe when it comes up in school, the kid yeah. who's watched this will go, sine wave. Yeah. And, oh, I've seen it on TV. I've seen it in a cartoon. I've seen it on Star Trek. Like, you know, it's, it's like, the, yeah, fair enough. Okay, I understand. Um, and so... As I've enjoyed this show more and more, and I know Disco's mm. coming back, and I'll probably enjoy that because I've been enjoying the coming season of Disco, I'm mm. kind of dreading Picard at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same. I think it's, I love Patrick Stewart and I'll watch him in anything. And I'll probably mm. enjoy parts of Picard, but every time I see a new trailer for it, it's like, it just feels like someone really did in the writer's room just go, hey, what was if we made a depressing Voyage Home? Yeah. Yeah. Voyage Home. But miserable. I mean, and I Pardon love me. John Delancey, and I love like Whoopi Goldberg, the Whoopi Goldberg, and I mean, like I, I will happily be wrong. <clears throat> yeah. Oh yeah. I, 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 would, things, I, I want I to be want wrong. I want to be wrong. Yeah. I desperately want to be wrong. Um, but I mean, I, I was not the biggest fan of season I one. I didn't, I, I didn't dislike it, over, it. I liked it more than you, but mm. it's still potentially my least favorite of the. Uh, it's easily my least favourite. I didn't dislike it, um, but I I certainly didn't like. It didn't do for me what all of the what everything else has done, and that includes the like the the rocky start that was season one of, of Disco. Like um, I think season one of Disco, rightfully so, gets criticised for certain things, but I think it's bad, Matt. It's I, bad. <laughs> it isn't. It isn't. I think it. it the problem, the problem with season one of Disco is, as a whole, it makes its point and it comes together, but it did a bad mm. job of doing it and getting there. Yeah, I get you. Like, get you. it... If there was some hint that they were trying to tell us a story of, oh, this is a dark time and we want to end up back in a more hopeful mm. notion, but mm. it just felt like... It was living up to everyone's worst expectations of. Oh no, we're doing modern, dark, gritty Star Trek. Yeah. Um, I think it was the I wrong I... idea <clears throat> to relaunch Star Trek as a concept. However, as a piece of the puzzle, as a piece of the larger puzzle, certainly. Yeah, I think like again, hindsight is twenty twenty, really, isn't it? And like. I think when you see what they've done now, not just with disco, but with everything else that they're putting out, yeah. actually the the balance of shows um, is like there's a lot of good Star Trek right now. It, oh, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of great Star Trek, and I re again I really really hope that Picard season two joins that great Star Trek, um, and not. And isn't just well, good. two more seasons of Picard anyway, because we have confirmed it is ending on three. Yeah, I mean, it would seem a bit daft to go further than that, because, like, Patrick Stewart's no spring chicken anymore. Oh, like, it's his, not like uh, his character is arguably immortal. <laughs> his character is immortal, but the, the actor isn't, so unless they've Do got Do you know that? Very... Have you got solid proof of that, Matt? I mean, admittedly, if... I haven't managed. I haven't managed to kill him. If any actors were going to be immortal, it feels like Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart would be the two to do it. It would certainly be the two that you'd like to be immortal. Tricks the gods have come to Earth, decided to be actors for a few decades, and then they'll just... <laughs> like... I'd be perfectly happy with that. I, I think if that if that were the case, I, I'd be fine with that. Like... Or oh, I'm afraid it, it, one of them is potentially a... Trick's gone. One of them, once upon a time, was probably very self-important and decades of, like, worn him down into a... Uh... Well, that would be... that would be um... Star Trek did it, I, didn't that, it? That would be Patrick Stewart, wouldn't it? Yeah, because he... Yeah. he and I Ma- love when Ma- he McKellen... talks about how when he started on Star Trek, mm. he was miserable. Like, towards yeah. like the other actors, he was all like, oh, no, I will not have fun. <laughs> and, like, working yeah, on it... a an American TV set, effectively, mm. where yeah. everyone wants to have a bit of a laugh and a joke because you're working together for however... So, Ma- McKellen's the trickster god, then. Because yeah. it'd be McK- McKellen, who, behind the scenes, uh, without anyone <laughs> noticing, is the one that pushed uh, Patrick Stewart's career in that direction, um, almost as a joke and punishment for him being far too serious. Um, and uh, And then that was it. 
And then it, uh, after after seven seasons of Star Trek, he's mellowed out enough that he and he and McKellen can I think have, the, uh, have, have fun. The last play they did together was coming on uh, the National Theatre's subscription service soon. Oh, that'll be fun. Because if you didn't know, um, anyone at home who doesn't know, this isn't Star Trek related, but I think it's useful information, the National mm. Theatre has a subscription service. It does. I think they had such a success with like showing some plays over the start of a... Uh, of uh, the lockdowns that uh, they decided, wait a minute, we could probably launch a subscription service of a copious amounts of digital plays we just have in the archive and don't do anything with. Mm. <laughs> well, I mean, they've, they've been making an effort to put more on at the cinema oh, as well. they have, but once is, it's had that cinema great. one, right. it, mm. the stuff vanishes. So a subscription yeah. service to put it on makes perfect sense. Perfect because sense, yeah. Theatre suppose... is the one art form that really isn't, if you don't, and again, the cinema options, but if you don't, mm. and it's not even see living in a city. It's really in the UK. It's if you don't live in London. Yeah, because it's not like you can go to other bigger cities like Manchester or your city, and it's not like there's a mass amount of. Uh... I mean, there's plays on, but it's, they have plays be... and we have theatres, but they tend to be it more be focused just... on musicals. On. I mean, the the local theatres here have got some really good plays on, um, but they um, obviously you don't have like a, your big a whole... stuff. Well, I mean, you do I mean, have got the big a... stuff, but it but it won't be the same actors. Yeah. It won't be those big names, well, um, unless they do a tour or something. Yeah, like, like that. I have a, uh, I have a, a very popular theatre in my hometown. Mm. It pretty much just does stand up comedy and stuff for the elderly, because yeah. it's all it can turn money on. And uh, yeah, it theater... and pantomimes and pantomimes. Yeah, theatre is a uh, and wrestling occasionally. Mm. But yeah, na- uh, the National Theatre subscription app, cool thing. I watched a uh, Treasure Island uh, play on it a bit ago. Mm. That the production on was I'm... outstanding. I wonder if some of it was um, licensing. Potentially. Like why they've had to wait. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, again, for, for the actors, they'd probably want paying for it. They also um, might not. Right, have... Rightfully so. They also might not have thought there was money in it. Yeah. They might have thought no one wanted a theatre subscription service until they saw how many people watched <laughs> mm. watched the plays. I mean, I think the thing is that, like, especially after um, the Danny Boyle um, Frankenstein um, yeah. duo, where he obviously coming from a film director's background. Because even then, that only like, but how successful that was in cinemas only really showed. How much people were willing to still to go out and see stuff. My point more was the fact that like he showed that you could shoot it and edit it in a fashion that was watchable from your sofa. I don't think he's I the think. first person to do. I know, that but I think remotely. he was the. But I think he was his was the most famous. I think that's the thing. It's it's more the fact that like, um, for the for the general public, that would have been one of the first ones that people would have, like really thought about mm-hmm. um maybe and like it's the first one i remember i mean there's plenty of plays that were shot and filmed before, before yeah but i don't think shot. but i don't think there was quite the like i don't think that was just I'd popular in any... cinemas it yeah, did yeah, it, true. it did it had a lot of cine, cinema end courts mm. and i'd still say if you ask the majority of people, no one's going, oh, yeah, Danny Boyle's Frankenstein. Everyone's going, oh, yeah, the Cumberbatch and mm. and uh, Miller Frankenstein. Yeah. The uh, Sherlock and Sherlock Frankenstein. Yeah. But on that yeah. note, Star mm. Trek is cool. Theatre is cool. Star Trek is very cool. Yeah. And I think um, we shall see you for one final episode of Lost Bears. Mm. Before season two, obviously. Before season two, where yeah. uh, we discuss... The final two-parter. Yeah. And on that note, the Vlog of Costco guys. I saw you prep your fingers there.